So this is C.J. Baker, and this is episode 24 of the ongoing history of protest music, a companion podcast to the website ongoinghistoryprotestsongs.com. And today, my special guest is the Canadian hip hop duo Naughty Nose Res Kids. So I'd like to thank you for being here. Of course, thanks for having us. And maybe to begin with, I can get each of you to introduce yourselves to our listeners. All right. Hey, what's good, y'all? My name's Darren. I go by the name of Young D. Born and raised in Kitimat Village, Heisel Nation. And I'm one half of Stein No Press Kids. My name's Quentin Nice, aka Young Tribes, and I have the same story as D, come from Heise Nation, um, and yeah, representing Sonny Nose Rose Kids. Excellent. So I'm looking forward to interviewing the two of you. To begin with, we're of course doing this through Zoom, so we are social distancing. So yeah. how have the two of you been making out with the pandemic? Uh, I mean, it's got its highs and lows, of course, you know, uh, like obviously we had a big American tour canceled, we had an Australian tour canceled, um, and it looks like by the way that things are going, we probably won't be performing for another at least a year. But other than that, you know, like we've just been making the best of it and sitting down and like getting a lot of music done, uh, working on new concepts, we're working on a new album right now and just like kind of just getting to know ourselves again, you know? Yeah, you know, it's just like the whole COVID experience kind of hits everybody at different times. For some, it hit them in the beginning. For some, it hit them in the summer. And for some, it's hitting them hard in the fall. You know, and it's seeing how, like, there's a lot of downtime nowadays. So, yeah, we're making music, but it's also important to, like, learn some other things that you could apply to yourself that could put I'm you in a that balance like, there. Yeah, that could put you in a position to whenever COVID ends, you're ready. You know, you're locked and loaded and like yeah. you're ready to go. So have you guys been doing any live streaming or yeah we've done a few. You know, like uh we got a place out here called Blue Light Studio that we work out of. Um they're they're like kind enough to open their doors to us when when whenever we kind of like came to them with uh with, with an opportunity. Uh we've probably done like maybe like a handful like five five live streams this summer and fall well, but yeah we try to keep it to a minimum just like you don't really want to have like too many of those out there in my opinion but yeah i know you guys been as you mentioned busy creating new music as well so you previously you released three four length albums and then earlier this year you released the ep born deadly but by yeah. the time this episode airs, you will have released a new single and video for Where They're At, Where They're At, which features yeah. those phrases. So what's yeah. the motivation behind that tune? Um, yeah, just uh, we, like us and Jesus go back to our first album. Um, we had a song called The Resistance. And uh, like Darren and I, we've been a fan of like hip hop since we were like kids. Uh, and like when we moved to the city, we um, figured out who Jesus was, and he's he's kind of like a heavy hitter on the indigenous hip hop scene. So like for us, it was like only natural to reach out to him and like try and like work something out. Um, and then we featured him on the second album. It was called uh, on the Scoting Remix, yeah. and that was like that in itself is like a, obviously a protest song as well yeah. uh, against like um, industry and uh, like. Um, uh, extracting from like our lands and stuff uh but on this one it's more of like a it's more like lighthearted. it's kind of just letting people know like through the pandemic and all that that we're still here we're still working and yeah. like we're not a lot like kind of like what the resistance was but more of like a lighthearted version of that yeah yeah and just like just the journey you know what i mean like jesus has had a much much different path than we have and even when it comes down to, you know, me and my bro right here, like we've had different paths and you made choices and whatnot. So it's like all of us coming together and then just elevating together. Well, I know it's not as explicitly political as some of your songs, but in the idea of just the celebration aspect to it, I think it's important yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. 
I, I feel like uh, um, we try not to take ourselves too serious all, seriously all the time. Yeah. And uh, we, yeah, for us, that was just like something that, that we could just have fun with. Oh, so it is a pretty solid track. I definitely recommend my listeners to check out there. So I know that on your, like, along with this track, I know on your albums, you quite often, not only do you work with non-Indigenous artists, but quite often you work with fellow Indigenous artists as well. So do you feel it's important to use your platform to amplify their voices? Yeah, of course. Like, um, me and Darren, like, uh, since, since we started this, at, like, we make this music for, uh, like, a healing tool for ourselves, first and yeah. foremost. And then you go on to like uh, the people that listen to our music. So a lot of it is like youth. And for us, um, we had kind of, uh, we, we were kind of lucky because a lot of people that we reached out to when we first started this, they kind of like welcomed us with open arms. Yeah. And we had a, like, like I said, Jesus and Mob Bounce and yeah. a lot of those like guys that have been doing it for a long time that are kind of like well established in, in, in the industry. They kind of like just like mentored us through um, through our through our journey as like hip hop artists in this like weird industry that we're a part yeah. of that we had no clue how to navigate. Yeah. So I feel like for us, if we see potential in an artist, um, we do try and do the same for them. Yeah. And I feel like uh, it, like this whole um, this whole mo- like uh, like us as indigenous artists, uh, we have such a small market that we're like yeah. available to. So like like you know we don't we don't have um, the people that like l- listen to our music like uh, like a lot, lot, of, lot of other artists do. So like we, we, we cater to a small market. So I feel like we need to look after the people that are trying to do it like us. And we need to try and like uh, elevate like what we're doing and try and like um, make more people listen and, and get more people involved, like especially with artists. Yeah. yeah. It's like there is like the way we look at it too is like there's room for all of us to eat. You yeah. know, it, it just doesn't have to be like one big fish in the sea. Like it could be, it could be the whole clan, you know? So. Yeah. Which mm. is definitely positive to raise up as many people as possible. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So the last full length album you put out was Trap Line, which is a personal favorite of mine. Like it was on my website. It was one of my favorite albums of 2019 and it made my oh. best of the decade list. I was also reading that your initial intent with that album was to make a completely different album. Yeah. So what was the direction you were originally planning on going and why did you make that change? Um, our original plan was to make an album called Res Bangers and Cool Pops. And it was going to be like, kind of like, kind of like what, where that is, you know, it's going to like a lot of, like a lot of the stuff that we write about when, when we're on a spare time freestyling or just kicking it. It's not, we don't have a whole lot of um, like kind of like backstory to what we freestyle with. And the album was supposed to be like kind of like a, like a feel good, like a uh, fun album where it just like, just kind of like, you know, made people vibe to it. And we were gonna, we were th- almost thinking at the time that we were, uh, started writing the album, which is like what, 2018 D? Something like that, 2018, yeah? Late 2018. Like, but anyways. When we started Trap Line? Yeah, well, we started writing it. Yeah. So, yeah, so it was pretty much right after uh, we we uh, released um, uh, the Average Savage. Yeah. And we were and yeah, and one thing that D and I was talking about was like, okay, we could uh, do the Average Savage. Uh, get like like you know we had that message behind it, um, trying to like uh, like kind of expose um, expose the state that we live in for how like like let people know that there is racism here, and we try to expose it. So we try to get away from the politics, but when you think about like indigenous people, you can't like talk about like identity without talking about politics. You can't talk about yeah. anything without talking about politics. Like we are political people, like we have to be. And that's like the essence of our survival. So trap line for me, especially with everything that was going on on Wet Seals Territory and on Lilo Island and even down like, like you think back to like Standard Rock and all that, yeah. uh, uh, they're trying to like extract resources from those territories or um, lay resources through the territory. And, and that is usually done without consent. So trap line for us was letting people know that, uh, like letting people know like 
like where we come from and letting people know our roots and why we stand up for what we stand up for. So that was like the concept of the album. And we just had to like, just get back to like, like our kind of our, like what we're about, you know? Yeah. So that's what Trap Line was for us. I think yeah, Potter, you... oh. No, I was going to say he hit that on the money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think part of what made that album powerful because musically it's accessible, like it, with the trap beats and it's something that you can kind of yeah. free bang to. But that's a good way to maybe hook people, like people like myself that maybe don't have the indigenous background. Yeah. And, you, can and get, you can get people in with the beats and then exactly. they actually listen to the lyrics. It's, yeah. And that's just it. You know, like the music comes first. So it's like, yeah. if, if you don't make good music, no one's going to listen to your message. Yeah. So like, like obviously the message comes first, like with like who we are, but if you don't make the music that uh, people can listen to, then, then what's the point? You know, it's just, it's just yeah. a message that no one's going to listen to. Um, I, I do feel like trap line was kind of like just that too. Like, you know, uh, um, it was almost like a play on play on words too, because yeah. we like making trap music, but like, like the way that Darren describes it is it's almost like, like indigenous trap in a sense where we're not trapping like, like they do in the streets, we're not selling drugs, yeah. but uh, we're kind of like, you know, like selling dreams <laughs> yeah. to be less cliche or, but you know, but yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're uh, just letting people know where we come from. Yep, and definitely a powerful album for that. So as we touched upon the indigenous issues is something you address a lot within your music. And we know here in Canada, because sometimes people forget, especially what's going on in the States, people say, okay, Canada is the less racist neighbor. Yeah. We're not the less racist, I guess it's up to debate. But racism exists there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it's a good <laughs> reminder for that. And you quite often even hear that like, they throw out the term reconciliation, but, but it almost seems to be empty when it looks like you look at the yeah. actions that are actually happening. Yeah, facts. And like, I mean, just for example, like you can see what's going on out in Nova Scotia and Micmac right now, yeah. you know, like yeah. RCMP ain't doing a damn thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, we see both sides. I'm like, what's, what do you mean you see both sides? You know, like if that was like, say, indigenous people doing something like that, there will be charges out the ass and like jail cells will be full without hesitation. So, like, you see people that could go through that, that have been doing that and like vandalizing property and fishing gear and right down to somebody's van, you know what I mean? And nothing. But you get one of you get like a land protector who's just peacefully protesting, get yeah. thrown in jail, you know what I mean? And like, that's why it's like it could be triggering for some when people say, like, oh systemic racism doesn't exist or oppression doesn't exist racism doesn't exist you know like because most people that say that is when it doesn't affect them yeah when whoever gets elected as prime minister or president it doesn't affect them yeah you know so yeah just to add on to what you just said too you know like um he said that uh like they're talking about how it doesn't exist and either yeah. and people people are talking about like Almost like, uh, yeah, and sorry, I just lost my train of thought. But what, what I was going to say was um, uh, people, are, people are talking about how, like, native, native, the native, native people over on the East Coast, the things that's going on with them, uh, they're talking about, oh, no, like, these people have a right to be pissed. Like, those, like, and when I was out there, there was, like, talking about how there's not racism, there's, it's, yeah. like, a good place to live, it's good for natives. But the thing is, is like the racism's always been there. It's just being exposed right now because yeah. people's livelihoods are being affected when they're yeah. really not. Because look at what's been going on to us for since like contact, since yeah. since, since the state of Canada like uh, came to existence, we've been oppressed. And now they get like, uh, you know, like a couple months of um, being told what to do and being told what they can't do. And they're feeling the pressure and they're blame, putting it on us because we're able to practice our, practice our, um, our culture and like, and, or sorry, and, and fish off our lands yeah. when they can't, they're feeling that, but they don't understand that that's been happening to us for 
since since contact, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of just annoying to me to see how that's all going down. Like racism just being exposed on that side of the country. Yeah. And like, exactly. I was just going to say to add on to that about the racism getting exposed. It's like people now have the presence of mind if they're experiencing something like that to pull out their phone yeah. and record it because that never happened before. So because there wasn't, there was no physical evidence, a lot of people just kind of turn their cheek and turn their head the other way. But now it's like, you can't do that anymore because it's right there. Yeah. And, and then like, if you do that, just like what Q said, the racism gets exposed, you get exposed for, you know, your true colors. Like okay. to sum that all up, like with everything that's been going on this year, there's like yeah. revolutionary times, your true colors get exposed. You know what I mean? I think that's even a big thing with social movements right now that, like you mentioned, like the camera phones, like basically it's, everyone can be a journalist now. Yeah. Can expose things that maybe the mainstream media doesn't report. Exactly. That's what I was just going to say. Like, you know, this, this is the stuff that's been happening for years and years and years since I was a kid. And uh, mainstream media would never cover it. Yeah. But with social media, and like Dan said, it's as simple as pulling out your phone and recording yeah. and then getting, and then hitting like, you know, a million views. And like people start to see and people start to share and like people take notice. So now, like even for what's going on over there, I don't even think that that stuff would be covered on, yeah. on like mainstream media if we never forced it. Yeah. But it's being forced, it's being forced right now. So yeah, I think like, yeah, I think it's just, I think everything's just being exposed for what it is. And um, yeah, especially with, with what's going on in the States and like the, the state that we're in where everyone's home, no one's out like, doing anything through like COVID and all that. Yeah. Uh, I think people are just starting to take notice and we're being forced to like deal with this. Yeah. I know these are issues you definitely address in your music. Like even our conversation right now, let me think of the track off, Average Savage, like KKKK Canada. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that was around, we started writing that uh, around the time when, uh, remember when all that, I, th I think I think it was like uh, Carolina or something like that, when all those like protesters were with tiki coaches and and then that, that girl got killed in the streets. Um, I think that was like right when, was that when Trump got elected? It was like a year after. A year after, and uh, that girl got killed, and it was this like this this white supremacist group that was like uh, protesting, and Trump just he kind of just like like kind of like brushed it off, excused yeah. it, and that's what kind of triggered that song, and it was just letting like the world know that you know for us like KK Canada like we're letting them know that we're not much different over here. Um, and like we said, it's just being exposed now. And a lot of people, they don't understand that they have racist tendencies that they need to unlearn from uh, since like they grew up in this, in this, in this country and they learn from even, even their parents. And you know, like, like we all have tendencies that we need to unlearn. We all have things that we've learned that we need to unlearn. And a lot of people don't even know that they're racist until, until, um, until they get hit with something that makes the makes it come out of them, you know. And I and I feel like that's like it is what it is. There's nothing wrong with unlearning things, and people got to like take that seriously and just like like just like evaluate themselves and look themselves in the mirror and, and like be okay with that with unlearning like things that they've picked up over the years. And I feel like like the average the average savage like. Uh, what what we did expose on the average savage was like a lot of like Disney shows and like Looney Tunes and all these cartoons that even for us as kids like like you know like like for example Pocahontas and all the skits on there uh, it's the savages savages yeah. savages barely even human these are shows that like kids were watching and you know like it's getting ingrained in their minds and they don't even know it yeah that those are like racist tendencies that they're learning. From, from like kid shows that we need to unlearn. But until we talk about it, it's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I think you guys definitely provide important voices to those discussions. 
So I know quite often when I talk to, it might be different for you because of the type of music you make, quite often when people make political music, sometimes there's backlash from speaking out. Is that ever an issue that you guys have faced? Um, no, not really, not, not like, obviously we've uh, heard stuff from like certain like groups of people, but uh, as a majority of like our listeners, like it's mostly like positive. Yeah. So I feel like I feel like for us, there's like backlash from our, from different communities or whatever, being like, "That's not your music. Like you can't do this." Blah, blah, blah. Just like kind of like haters, you know? Yeah. It doesn't like that kind of stuff doesn't really affect us because of the people that we do help with our music. Yeah. That means a lot more. And there there are a lot of people that are like that uh, don't appreciate the music we make, but that doesn't mean that. Uh, we shouldn't be doing it. So like for us, like with the amount of people that listen to our music and the amount of people that we do help with uh, like learning or like like being proud of themselves, that's, like, yeah. that's kind of what our music is for. It's to like empower our people. That's why we do it. So like, you know, all that other stuff doesn't even matter. Yeah. So there's another project I wanted to mention too, because this is one of my favorite projects of the year. There was an album put out by David Strickland, The Spirit of Hip Hop. Mm -hmm. David Strickland along with Maestro Fresh West were actually the first two guests on the podcast. I know you appeared on that album on the track Enemies. So what was it like working with David Strickland? It was cool, man. Like, yeah. he, he's, he's like OG. OG, like OG. The OG's OG, you know, yeah. like you know, he's just done so much throughout his like just an amazing career. And, you know, me personally, like, I'm a huge Drake fan, right? It's yeah. to, just knowing that he had that history with him. Like, he invited us over to his house to record that song. Okay. And, and as you just look around the room, it was just, like, like plaques. I, don't know. <laughs> I, my, my, I remember being there, and, like, my jaw just dropped, like, wow. <laughs> like, yo, this is crazy. And he's telling us stories about working with red man and showing them pro tools and like just working with all these legends. I was just like, this is a incredible moment to be in. And so like we recorded it. Uh, I don't know about, I don't know about Q, but I had some nerves cause like it's, it's fucking David Strickland, you know? <laughs> like, so, but no, it was cool, man. And like, he was just super open to it, to our ideas. And he told us, you know, what his album was going to be and how he wanted us to be a part of it. And then he actually, I remember him saying, like, before we played the records, like, yeah, you boys, you boys are going to bring me out of retirement for rapping. Like, I even got a verse on this song. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's do this then. But yeah, man, it was cool. Like, we actually had a, like, a long studio day that day, too. Like, we were recording, we were still recording Trap Line, and we we're in the studio for, like, nine hours. And then, like, as soon as we we're leaving the stew, one of our boys hit us up, like, yo, come to Strickland's house. Let's record. And I know, I know for me, I'm like, man, we just spent nine hours recording. <laughs> Fuck. It was like, okay, whatever. So we went there and yeah, man, slowly but surely it all came along. Yeah, and Strickland's like, he's been like a, he's been kind of like a friend of ours for a few years too, like since then. And like, you know, every time we come to the city, he always hits us up, tries to get us to his house. And like, obviously, you know, like we're doing all right for ourselves and, yeah. and kind of like just what you said earlier, you know, like um, uh, natives support natives, especially yeah. in the art scene, especially in the music scene. So that, that's kind of what that is. It's just like a mutual respect for one another. Yeah. And uh, if we're in, in the city with like any other na native artists, like the last time we were in the city was, um, we're in the city with him, uh, Jesus was there. And they both hit us up. We're like, oh, yo, let's roll for the studio. And that's where where the, the, where they at. The song that's coming out tonight. That's where that started. Started in the studio in Toronto with David Strickland and Jesus. And we're just kicking it. Cool. I guess one of the reasons why that album works that, I mean, one, he did feature a lot of Indigenous artists. We even talked about, you guys mentioned before, how there's some that think, okay, hip hop's not your music to make. A part of why that album works is it kind of makes the link between native culture and hip hop music and draws the similarities. Yeah, definitely. It's like, um, so I think he had a, 
Who do you have? I think it was on the intro with yeah, Ernie Pickett. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and like you know, he's OG too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, our boys from Mob Bounce yeah. told us one of his analogies that he had for it, and it's like the re- there's like a big reason why you know indigenous, especially indigenous youth, yeah. gravitate towards hip hop. It's because like they kind of go hand in hand, even though people say like it, they're totally different. They're really not. Because you got okay, so you look at the elements of hip hop. You got the MC, right? Well, in indigenous culture, we have the storyteller. Yeah. Hip hop, you have the DJ. Well, we have our drummers. Yeah. You know, hip hop, you got the B boys and the B girls. Well, we got our power dancers. You know, hip hop has the graffiti, and then we have our carvers, we have our painters, we have our jewelers. You know, so like they're really, like even if like they're not connected, they're parallel. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, I know like so many kids. Like when we were growing up, we all just loved hip hop. And then even today, like all the youth that when we go back home and listen to it, I you know show me some music that you're playing, and it's just nothing but hip hop. You know. Yeah. And. Yeah, it's just like even like at the time when we didn't even know it, yeah, it was like subconsciously like connected. Yeah, and I and I think I heard a I know Strickland told me this, but I think I heard a I seen an Ernie quote on a on a like a YouTube video I was watching or something like that, and obviously he was there like when hip hop like in the beginning in the early stages right back in New York and like I like I've. I heard from other artists, or oh, sorry, uh, Ernie and uh, David, that like there was a lot of Native people there that were doing it as well, you know, that were there for the birth of hip hop. Yeah. So like, that's like, you know, like a lot of people don't know that, but um, obviously those guys do because they were there. Yeah. But yeah. So we already touched upon some of your musical influences, but who are some of your other musical influences? I mean, um, the list is <laughs> way too big. We'll be here for another hour if we were to talk about all our influences, you know. But, you know, we have our favorites from yeah. every decade. You know, from the 90s, we have the group that we grew up on. In the 2000s, we have our go-tos in high school. But even, like, right back to the last decade, the 2010s, like, we have those certain artists that just stood out to us. Yeah. And... <laughs> That's my short way of putting it. But, you know, uh, when it comes to being influenced, it's really, it depends when you ask us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and where we're at in our life. You know, and like, this, yeah, exactly. And uh, I know for us, like, we're big Earth Gang fans. Oh, okay. Yeah, under J. Cole's Dreamville label. Like, almost everybody on Dreamville, really. They're like, mm-hmm. Their sound is just so different. but. Yeah. You know, as much as we love the the two thousands yeah. hip hop and last decades hip hop, like we over time we've been learning how to keep an open mind. Yeah, the new music that's coming out. Yeah, you know, because like, because they say like hip hop's like a young man's game, when really, when really it's not. It is and it isn't. You know, and yeah, it's just keeping an open mind and be like, okay, what's why does why is this record so big? why did he say this line at this particular time or why did he do this thing with his melody and his voice and kind of really break it down yeah. and yeah man it's just evolve or evaporate yeah. <laughs> for us really yeah i feel like even more than like even more than uh learning to like like would you say do you like kind of like appreciate it or uh learn to uh, like just like listen to it and like yeah i think it's more like learning to love it you know like love hip-hop for what it is and it's like a forever changing genre you know it's never it's never going to sound the same and like you know like five years from now it might sound different than it does today and for me um like i've learned to like love like the, the new artists coming out like I, like lately i've been listening to a lot of a lot of young thug uzi Vert, obviously passed away rappers like um um uh, my mind is on blank. Like, oh, like XXX Tentacion, and you know, like just artists that are coming up like that because they come with a different sound, you know. Like, yeah. and this is like the new generation of rap that's coming in, and 
that's kind of like what influences me. Like, like what inspires me is like how much it changes and how much like, uh, no matter how much it changes, people will accept it, you know? And that's kind of like for us too, you know, like we weren't the same people five years ago. So, and you know, like people still gravitate towards us. So yeah. why not, why not appreciate change for what it is? And I feel like hip hop is like changing for the better, in my opinion. And a lot of people don't believe that, but. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, to add on to that, it's like, he, he kind of said it too, but like how hip hop is just continuously changing and evolving. Yeah. And say like if hip hop, sounded the way it did like when it started or in the 80s or in the 90s then you'd really have nothing to look forward to no because everything and everybody would sound the same yeah you need that and, progress yeah yeah and like An so to see, yeah to see the evolution of hip-hop it's just amazing because like it started off with people saying like oh this is a fad it's gonna it's gonna be like disco it's gonna die out but here we are today it's the number one genre in the world yeah and yep. you guys yeah. definitely play your part in that too so yeah thank you so as mentioned we you guys are working on a new album so i understand mm. you plan on releasing it sometime in 2021 can you give us any other details about what you're planning with the album yeah i mean like i guess darren could talk to it like he started producing and uh we we actually had this concept album uh that we were working on for the last year and a bit and it was it's funny with everything we're going through right now the album was like a post-apocalyptic feel okay. with uh, kind of like kind of like lot, lots of synths like a sci-fi feel but also at the same time like an edm like fast paced feel and like kind of like lots of switch ups um but the concept behind the album that we we, we we put it on the back burner for now but the concept behind the album was um going through an apocalypse like the end of the world type shit and indigenous people and people that gravitated towards them and like respected them for what they were would be the survivors because the indigenous people know how to navigate these lands yeah. and everyone everyone else would just drift off like into the afterlife or whatever you know and um we put that it's funny because especially with what we're going through right now eh? it's kind of like a we're in, like living in a different different world you know it's like and who knows if it'll ever go back to normal but that since all this shit started going down you know like me and Darren said we've been going through going through ours you know this is supposed to be our year yeah. so we we had a Mer big american tour you know like um we're we're known enough to to sell out shows across the country stuff like that and you know when all this stuff went down uh that put that on the back burner it kind of it hit us in a weird way and we went into like a like a weird mindset so lately we've been kind of just uh kind of like just writing from the heart yeah. and we we got onto a new concept album that's more of like a personal a personal thing than 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 having like something so like heavy so we're kind of we're kind of just like kind of writing for ourselves lately yeah. and kind of like what uh snotty nose Rise kids one was and we're just kind of just like using it as a healing tool yeah. and just but at the same time, you know, given that's not enough sound and given, uh, given like, like we're going to give a really good album. Yeah. And yeah, you know, like over the last two years, we, you know, I've been learning how to produce and like, I've always had a certain vision for a certain sound and yeah, it's like, it's just like us taking it back to basics, like what Q said, which is having like writing for us because our last two were just so politically charged yeah and we felt like we had to be a voice yeah for them and like like a vessel to talk through and you know it's like you know sometimes like when you focus on everybody else and helping trying to help everybody else you kind of forget about yourself yeah it's just kind of what happened with us and so like with this one we just we're going back to basics really yeah like instead of paying money for a studio that we have to book in weeks or months in advance, now we're able to invest in our own and build our own. And so like, we're going back to the basics with like Average Savage and the first album and we're like, we're just gonna do it from home. You know, we feel like we're more comfortable with each other, we're more comfortable with recording, we're more comfortable with writing. And it's gonna be special, man. It's gonna hit different, but it's still gonna be us and our kid. 
I guess sure. the thing I think if you personally connected uh, songs and mm -hmm. the lyrics, that's gonna probably make it even more powerful. The personal connection. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So before we conclude, is there anything else you want to plug or say? Uh, yeah. Um, go check out the Where They At music video. It's coming out uh, um, on the 30th of, this, of October. So whether, whether, whether you guys, whether we're past that date or not, go, make sure you guys go check it out. It's a, we just filmed it yesterday. It's a really dope video. Yeah, so the song itself drops tonight at midnight no nine o'clock but then yeah the visual he was talking about okay so the video will be the 30th yeah yeah i watched yeah. the video today and that was kind of cool as well <laughs> oh no we got we got we got another video coming out like we, oh, okay so we're all official i know this was more of like a little visual yeah yeah, yeah. okay so it's something yeah. to be even more detailed yeah, that that that's just for like that's for tonight. That video's coming out, but we, okay. we, filmed, we filmed like a music video, music video uh, yesterday. Okay. Uh, yeah, for for it. So like we Jesus, Jesus came into town and uh, we rented out a house and just like like made a music video. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that'll be out. So make sure you guys go check that out. Well, so that'll be something to look forward to. So yeah, yeah. the song and the visual I'll probably post on the website tomorrow. Thank yeah. You. This is gonna come out later, so it'll yeah. be on the website for individuals yeah. to watch that. And then on the 30th, we can look forward to the official video. Yeah. yeah it's gonna be good. And to add on to that for last words, you know, as we're going into the entering the second wave of this COVID, yeah. spread love, not germs. You can make it through 2020, you can make it through anything. <laughs> That's definitely a positive message. <laughs> Is there any social media we should be checking out or anything? Or yeah, Snotty knows at Snotty knows Res Kids on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. It's the Res Kids. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. On Twitter it's at Res Kids. And what else you got, D? It's about it, eh? YouTube, yeah. Snotty knows Res Kids. Okay. Pretty simple. Everything, everything's the same except for Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's where they can find you then. Yep. I so encourage okay. everyone to check out your new music and your old music if they haven't listened to it yet. Yeah. And oh, yeah. spread love, not germs. That's a positive message to stand on as well. So yeah. thanks again. I enjoyed our discussion. No, thanks for having us, man.